Right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher, for the introduction. Thank you to all four organizers to uh, invite me to give a talk, to give this opportunity to speak about very recent work. Uh, and actually believe that I'm here yeah, after these two years, but here we are. Uh, yes, this is joint work with uh, David Sylvester, a long-time co collaborator, and uh, uh, Fung Zhu, who, who was my uh, postdoc uh, a couple of years ago uh, at Birmingham. Right, and this talk is uh, about uh, the switch focus from stochastic Galerkin to stochastic allocation. So, what is this talk about? Uh, we are solving the same class of uh, PD problems with parametric or uncertain inputs. Uh, the focus of the method uh, is on uh, stochastic allocation FEM based on sparse grids. In particular, for the multi-level version, I, I will explain, explain precisely. Uh, we will talk about uh, a posteriori error estimation with uh, hierarchical error estimates, and we will design and test uh, adaptive algorithms. So this is sort of the beginning uh, uh, of, uh, of our work on this, on this topic. There, is, there, there won't be much analysis in the talk. There will be lots of heuristics, uh, tests, and uh, uh, proof of concept uh, results with the focus on the effectivity and robustness of the error estimation strategy. We, we want to make sure that our estimator is as close to true error as uh, possible. And we will discuss the convergence rates and whether the optimality is feasible, at least experimentally, in the context of uh, stochastic allocation. Uh, this, what I'm going to talk about, is based on this piece of work, which is uh, uh, the, which are two parts of the same work, which is available uh, on archive. Um, and we start with the uh, same uh, class of problems. Uh, one little thing here, which is probably uh, was not emphasized in other talks, that we allow for randomness in the right-hand side uh, of the equation as well, Dirichlet boundary conditions for simplicity. Uh, spatial domain will be denoted by D, this physical domain, parameter domains by gamma, and we fix parameter domain to M dimensions. So we, we, we fix this from the outset. Uh, of course, parameters can be seen as images of uh, independent uh, random variables. In this case, we will deal with the uh, probability measure on, the, on, on, on gamma. Right, rather standard and typical from what uh, we have seen already this morning and afternoon. Uh, solvability assumptions, since we are going to uh, use sampling method, and uh, the, we want to present the estimator, the algorithm, and tests for problems uh, where we are not restricted to a fine or non-affine expansion or even to the randomness in the right-hand side. So all three types of examples will be considered. And so the only restriction for us is that the coefficient is bounded away from zero and from infinity uh, almost everywhere uh, on the domain, on the spatial domain, and almost everywhere on gamma with respect to pi measure, right? Uh, and then weak formulation is pi almost uh, pi almost everywhere on gamma is the uh, standard formulation with the Sobolev space uh, as a trial and test space. It's blackboard X space. Uh, and we know from the earliest paper on stochastic allocation, Babushkan, Nobili Tamponi, 2007, then there exists solution in the uh, Bochner space. So Bochner space is a uh, space of functions on gamma with images in the Sobolev space X with the values in this space. Okay, uh, I understand the audience consists of experts in, uh, uh, in, in stochastic allocation and this type of problems, but there are also from 
my discussions with people, I can see there are some people who may not be familiar. So this slide is a sort of a introductory uh, uh, slide for uh, people who did not come across stochastic allocation. So this is a sampling method. So the first point of uh, the first step is to sample PDE inputs at the set of collocation points. And for the set of collocation points, we will consider sparse grids. So sparse grids uh, have two essential ingredients. We need a set of nested nodes on the uh, unit one day on the one dimensional interval. Examples include layer points, uh, more famous and more usefully, more frequently used uh, clenshaw Curtis nodes. They must be nested. And the second ingredient is a monotone, or in other words, downward closed index set uh, lambda, which is uh, a subset. So index set of fixed length, the length of the uh, sequences in this index set is uh, the number of random variables M. And each, uh, each element of the index is a natural number starting with one. So this is slightly different from stochastic allocation. So the smallest in index is not made of zeros, it's made of ones. And downward closed or monotonicity property essentially means if I take an index from the index set and I subtract a unit multi-index in each direction, uh, I will get something in the set, the index is, that is already in the set. So, uh, and if you have, uh, then you tensorize, uh, uh, sets of uh, nodes into, uh, into gamma. And uh, then you can define this uh, sparse grid uh, collocation operator, which is familiar to experts. And for non-experts, I can just say it's made of this classical 1D Lagrange interpolation operators subtracted one from each other. And the essential thing here is that if these two properties, two properties in red are satisfied, if the family is nested and the index n is monotone, then the interpolation property holds. So basically you can look at S as the interpolation operator that if you take arbitrary function that is continuous on gamma, then you apply in the operator S, then you will obtain the values at the collocation points. Okay. This is the, uh, the, the, the main message. So we need to make sure in that in the adaptive process that we construct our uh, adaptive index sets, we should maintain uh, the monotonicity property. Okay, so when we have the sparse grid, we sample inputs and then we solve the coupled problems for each collocation points. So it's just basic finite elements uh, uh, formulation. Uh, the multi-level sort of structure is already built in here. So the, the bullet, when you see the bullet point next to anything, this will mean the discrete uh, object. The bullet point will be uh, replaced by uh, L, which is the iteration of the algorithm in the adaptive algorithm later. So, uh, but here, finite element spaces, they don't just come with bullets, they come with the collocation point Z. So each finite element space is diff may, may be different for different collocation points, okay? So you, you do this for each uh, collocation point, uh, maybe in parallel, uh, and then you build a multivariable interpolant from uh, all your sampled finite element solution using the standard multivariable Lagrange basis function associated with a set of collocation points. So behind the set of collocation points, there is this lambda, and it's useful to know that for each index in lambda, there might be a group of collocation points associated with that index. For layer points, it's one to one, and for clenshaw curtis it's more than one point associated with each index, just important to know. Uh, main features of stochastic collocation finite elements method. It's a sampling method. 
But in contrast to Monte Carlo, which is also sampling method, uh, stochastic allocation generates so-called surrogate models. It's a functional approximation. So you can uh, evaluate uh, approximation at the points which are not in your sparse grid, right? Uh, single level versus multi-level. So if all finite element measures are the same, we will call this single level stochastic allocation. If the, in this construction, they already, it is already built in a possibility to have different finite element measures associated with different collocation points. But of course, it is not a projection method. So there is no global Galerkin orthogonality that helps a lot when we design uh, Mm, error estimation techniques. Right, so mm, multi-level stochastic allocation firm, what do we mean by this? Uh, the first multi-level mm, stochastic allocation have been uh, designed in this work by Aretha Tikintra with uh, co-authors in 2015, and uh, more, more recently, by Lang, Scheichel, and uh, Sylvester. Uh, this is in the standard spirit of multi-level Monte Carlo. The, the, they used a hierarchy of spatial and hierarchy of stochastic approximation to balance and minimize cost. This is the idea from Mike Giles and earlier works in multi-grid and then multi-level Monte Carlo method translated to a, a stochastic allocation framework. It makes use of telescopic identity and based on a priori approximation properties of finite element discretizations and polynomial interpolation to balance the costs optimally. We understand by multi-level uh, stochastic allocation a slightly different approach. Instead of hierarchy, a precise hierarchy of spatial and stochastic approximation, we rather employ what we call individually tailored uh, spatial discretization across collocation points. And this is in the spirit of uh, work by Michael Scheich, uh, Feichel and Andreas Caglioni. Uh, uh, in, in this case, we leave freedom for spatial uh, approximations and parametric refinements to be driven by uh, a posteriori error um, indicators. Um, and this requires uh, a posteriori error analysis of uh, stochastic allocation finite, ele uh, finite element approximation. So can we estimate the error between the true solution and the output of the stochastic collocation FEM? Okay, and this brings us to a posteriori error estimation strategy. And uh, as far as I know, the uh, only work on, the, on, on this topic is the work by Diane Guignard and Fabio Nobile uh, that develops uh, a strategy for residual based a posteriori error estimation. In this context, it's applied and the proof at least inherently tailored towards a fine parametric uh, coefficients, um, single level stochastic allocation FEM, and the algorithm in that paper is uh, only for adaptive sparse grid refinement algorithm with uh, no account for uh, spatial adaptivity, which has been uh, uh, done later in, uh, in this uh, work by Mikhail and Andrea. Uh, Convergence of the method uh, of the adaptive algorithm presented by Diane and Fabio has been analyzed by uh, Martin Eigel with uh, collaborators quite recently, uh, again in the, context, in the context of single level stochastic allocation. And uh, Michael and Andrea analyzed convergence of the fully adaptive algorithm in the multi-level settings. But all these three works uh, the, the latter two works are based on the framework of residual based error estimation. So what is my goal today is to give you an alternative uh, error estimation uh, strategy for problems that are not bound and not restricted to affine or non-affine or the deterministic right-hand side uh, problems and that are, uh, have a scope for multi-level uh, adaptivity. Okay, this slide, uh, yeah, it just gives main ideas from uh, deterministic uh, finite elements that have been uh, 
discussed today at some length. So if you have uh, Galerkin orthogonality and uh, uh, things are simple, you have uh, Pythagoras theorem that can decompose the, uh, represent the error as the uh, error of the enhanced approximation and some computable quantity that is the error reduction. Directly from this, you get uh, the lower bound that is efficiency. And with saturation assumption, you get, you get reliability that has been discussed today. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the thing here is that you don't want to compute this enhanced approximation because the rule of thumb is to that your error estimation strategy is of complexity no more than the computation of the of the current solution so this goes back to the paper by bank and Weiser to actually avoid computation of the enhanced approximation by some decomposition of the enhanced space and this is uh, this brings us to hierarchical error estimation and the byproduct of this procedure, you get uh, efficient estimates on the error reduction that is the key to adaptivity. Again, this is a recap of what we have seen this, uh, this morning. It will, be, it will be reminiscent uh, later, so that's why I included it uh, here. The main point is, uh, the main question is how to choose the enhanced space. This is the key question to address, and we will do this uh, also. And to address the, uh, in addressing this question, our goal will be to somehow split spatial enhancements from parametric ones. And this has been done for stochastic Galerkin in the single level, and more recently by us in the multi-level. Uh, again, my, my color scheme that is, uh, uh, will be important from now on. If I have this dark red, think it's like more like brownish. Uh, it's uh, for spatial uh, things, for spatial approximation. The blue ones is for parametric, and the red one is something I want to put you, uh, pay your attention uh, to. In particular, these guys are in red. So this is the these are new spaces that has been uh, assigned to new parametric degrees of freedom. In the single level case, all meshes are the same. So it's just the same mesh. But for parametric uh, thing in the stochastic Galerkin, we found it convenient to start with the coarsest mesh and then refine it. The uh, algorithm will do something with this. So this is what it is. Right. So how do we proceed in stochastic collocation? Yeah, the same old story. We choose some enhanced approximation. Enhanced approximation comes with hats some uniform in, uniformly enhanced approximation. It's a big question mark yet. What is, uh, what is U hat? Such that, such that it is better, it is strictly better than uh, current approximation, right? Of course, then you do just simple triangle inequality, you get the reliable error estimates, but how you choose this enhanced approximation in the stochastic uh, collocation context? So this is how our current approximation looks like. It's an expansion in terms of uh, Lagrange uh, polynomial basis functions associated with each collocation points and coefficient of finite element solutions, which might be different. So in the single level case, well, all meshes are the same. What do you do? So for the spatial enhancement, this mimics fully, oops, This mimics uh, our current expansion. It's just you have enhanced spatial approximation on the uniformly refined uh, mesh for each collocation point. Okay, what to do for parametric enhancement? Uh, we tried different things and this is what we came up with. Uh, so you go for, you enrich your index set and that means you enrich a collection of uh, collocation points. This is the set uh, of collocation points you had. It will be associated with new Lagrange basis functions because there are more points. Lagrange basis functions have changed, right? And you need to know what do you compute here for uh, spatial coefficients. So since all meshes are the same, you compute it on the same meshes as everything else, and you subtract the current uh, 
current stochastic allocation. This is your parametric enhancement. Okay, then you put it together. So you need to, after this uh, uh, estimate, you subtract current solution. Its subtraction goes directly to spatial error estimate. And here you do simple manipulations that probably a very good student from the first numerical analysis course can do in 1D. It's basically manipulating with uh, Lagrange basis functions for more nodes and Lagrange basis functions for less nodes. You can do this. Uh, and this reduces this sum from uh, a large index set to uh, uh, basically what you added to the difference between the larger index set and your current index set. Right. Uh, okay, this is important point here, how you enlarge your index set. So for enlargement of index set, it's very important to maintain monotonicity of the, of the index set. And that's why we resort here to so-called reduced margin. So for those of you who are not familiar with margins, just that I had this uh, quick sketch, uh, what reduced margin is. So um, if, if you have an index set like this uh, in, in, three, in three variables, uh, you, you first create a margin. How do you create a margin? Basically you take every uh, index from your set and you add uh, all unit indices to each of them. Right, and then you create a you create a margin, but the 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 point is when we do adaptivity, we will uh, test or probe each of these index set, run Doppler marking on them, and probably when uh, when actual adaptive enrichment is done, not all of these uh, indices from the margin will be in the adaptively refined thing, but we need to ensure. Uh, monotonicity. And as you can see here, uh, reduced, so the margin, the definition of the margin is formally, if you take the index and subtract uh, at least one of these, you need to find an index from the original set. The reduced margin is a stronger definition. You need to subtract all of this to be able to get an index from the original index set. And as you can see here at the bottom, the two indices from the margin are not in the reduced margin because you can find a uh, unit vector that gives you something that is not in the original case. So there is no 112 in the original index set. But we, we, that's why our extension of the set of collocation points is based on reduced margin because the monotonicity property is very important to be able to write this Lagrange uh, polynomial basis representations on the extended uh, set of collocation points. Right, multi-level. And multi-level, again, you, you start thinking, but now new nodes, new collocation points must be associated with some new mesh. And uh, the natural choice would be to start with, uh, uh, with the coarsest mesh. And this is what exactly we do. So compared to what we had before, there was uh, one single mesh, but here we have a uh, finite element solution on the zero mesh. But we can't subtract now uh, original stochastic allocation as we did before. What we do instead, we solve uh, the problem again on the coarsest mesh here and will create this object, right? Which is cheaply computed because it's only on the, on, the, on the coarsest mesh. You can run this strategy and for single level as well. It, yeah. And uh, then you proceed in the same way and you get the uh, spatial uh, part of the estimate and the parametric part of the estimate. These are all computable now, but of course there is a, uh, there is a, Problem is before, you don't want to compute hats. You don't want to compute uh, uniformly refined uh, spatial approximations for each collocation points. Uh, so what do you do? Well, you apply triangle inequality, right? Right, so 
from so this is our let's say expensive computable but expensive uh, error estimate and if you apply triangle inequality you can then reduce this to a norm which splits into the spatial norm and the norm of on gamma this is your familiar guy you use uh, your favorite finite element uh, hierarchical or two level error estimate to get the bounds and you 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 have you have this for all collocation points you can do the same for parametric error indicators again apply triangle inequality and then well these are cheaply computable because it's only on the uh, coarsest grid and uh, you basically use indicators but it's useful to have indicators for parametric part of the estimate with respect to indices rather than with respect to collocation points right so there is a different in summation this summation is with respect to collocation points for spatial one and for uh, parametric one we run summation over indices in the margin in the reduced margin of the current index set right so in principle, these are cheaply computable and they are upper bounds. You can sum them up and you have your cheaply computable error estimator, but I will show that this is not what you should do. Right, algorithm. So our strategy is to use more expensive uh, a posteriori error estimate for the reason that will be demonstrated in numerical examples. Uh, but we can do it not at every iteration. We can set some output counter and compute uh, this expensive error estimator every now and then, right? Well, in experiments with computed at every step, at every iteration, but in principle, because it's more expensive, uh, you can compute them every now and then. So there is a solve step, which you do for uh, a solve for each collocation point and for each collocation point in the margin because you will need them later then you you compute uh, spatial indicators parametric indicators after those after applying triangle inequality those will those guys will guide your adaptivity so those guys can still guide adaptivity because they have enough information about uh, uh, reductions of the error, but we don't recommend to use them for uh, uh, error estimation. And every now and then you compute the more expensive error estimate and you quit if you uh, reach the tolerance. Then you, of course, you need to do marking and uh, uh, refinement. And this is what I am going to explain next. So for marking, you mark certain elements, certain indices, and for uh, refinement, there are Mesh refinement and simple. So in this case, we do either mesh refinement or parametric enrichment. There is no combined strategy. We uh, do them separately. Mesh refinement is uh, more or less trivial. You have a marked index set for each collocation node, and you basically refine the corresponding mesh. If you are in the framework of single level, you still mark uh, per collocation point, but then you devise a union of all marked set to get the same mesh for all mode, for all collocation points. It's more uh, tricky to, uh, it's when one needs to pay special attention to how to construct meshes for new collocation points, in particular in the multi-level framework. And this is what requires special explanations. So marking strategy first, uh, you have indicators. If spatial indicator is dominating, then you do spatial refinement. So you don't mark any collocation points or indices in the reduced market margin. You instead mark uh, elements or edges uh, for all finite element meshes for all collocation points at the same time. So we run this sum and with, uh, we require the minimal cardinality, cumulative cardinality of marked in this index set across all current collocation points. And you see the uh, error estimates, the spatial ones are weighted by the appropriate uh, norm of the Lagrange basis functions to mimic how these enter the estimates, right? So these are exactly this. Uh, if parametric par if parametric 
error indicator dominates, then you don't do spatial marking. You only do parametric marking. It's a Doppler, but without squares. So it's equivalent. But simply because we don't have our, uh, L2 orthogonality here, we instead you've used triangle inequality to separate uh, spatial from parametric. That's why but it's, it's equivalent. Right. Finally, if you do parametric enrichment, you need to say what is going to be your mesh. And in stochastic Galerkin, as was demonstrated by Michele this morning, you can resort to, sufficient, to, to the coarsest meshes start from scratch for each new collocation point. This was our first idea to try, and it just didn't work spectacularly, right? So then you have a choice. You have a choice, either you go coarse, then your uh, spatial uh, approximation, spatial errors uh, blow up, or you go, uh, very refined, and then your your costs uh, are not perfect. So somehow you need to find a strategy to balance these conflicting requirements. And this is what we are going. Well, this is what we are doing. We set a intermediate uh, set an auxiliary tolerance that is based on uh, spatial error estimates for existing collocation points, weighted by the Lagrange basis function norm, but Lagrange basis function norms associated with already in mind with the uh, addi with addition of new collocation points. Uh, and we average them, average them by the number of existing collocation points. So basically we create a tolerance based on the average of uh, spatial errors for existing collocation points. And we drive the usual solve estimate refine uh, mark refine algorithm for each new collocation point to bring them to the same page, yeah? to, to, to have them uh, satisfy the same tolerance. So they are more or less uh, of, the, of the same order. And this uh, brings us to uh, first experiment. I think at this point, I need to know how much time do I have? And if there are any questions for this, about 10 minutes before questions. Great. Uh, right. So first experiment is the problem that was uh, mentioned several times to, today uh, uh, with the diffusion co coefficient. It's, it's a, f a fine expansion. Uh, so I promise to see three examples here. So uh, problem with a fine expansion, Fourier type modes, uh, uniform random variables uh, with the fixed, with, with fixed M in this context, right? So what we are going to do, we run adaptive algorithm with some uh, marking parameters. In our experiments, there, is, there are always uh, sparse grids with clan shock curses, collocation points, tolerance. And the first point, the, the, the reason I include this example is just to show uh, why you should not use triangle inequality in this and why you should not use cheap error estimates that are obtained from indicators. And we also compare single level versus multi-level. So here we are. So in red, the more expensive uh, error estimates obtained before triangle inequality and uh, tri sorry. triangle reds are the associated effectivity this is. And in, 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 in black are the error estimates obtained after application of triangle inequality, basically as a sum of indicators. And you can see uh, f from here that uh, the one, the, the cheap ones, they start deviating from uh, the effectivity starts deviating from one. And if you have M equal to eight, this deviation will become even more pronounced. Right, so that's why uh, in, and the, this, this effect will, will be even more pronounced if you use uh, non-affine expansions. This is picture is interesting, right? So this is comparison between single level and multi-level. On the left hand side is single level on the right multi-level. And this is not what we wanted to see because we wanted to see an improvement in, in, in multi-level in terms of rate. So we are looking at the black, uh, black lines here. The blue, and, the blue and red are just interactions of spatial and parametric error indicators. You can ignore them for now. But you see the rate is the same. 
the rate is effectively the same. We gain a little bit in terms of the number of degrees of freedom to, uh, to reach tolerance. So here's 210 minus five. Here we're just below 210 minus five by marginally. So there is no win. And this is very much what was observed by Mikhail and Andrea in that paper, although they, they, if I quote them almost precisely, that the analysis seemed to be the best for fully uh, multi-level approximation. The experiments suggest that single level is still uh, an efficient uh, way of doing this. Okay, we say, but this is uh, um, a fine expansion. Let's consider a more interesting non-affine parametric coefficient or now on the L-shaped domain. So we have a diffusion coefficient in the log uniform uh, form. So we have exponential of uh, uh, affine expansion uh, with some uh, agent pairs here from the covariance operator associated with uh, this covariance function. Again, the images are uniform. Uh, the parameters are images of uniform random variables. Uh, and we have two parameters here in red. One is the number of uh, random variables and sigma is the parameter that we will vary to kind of uh, very uncertainty in the coefficient. The biggest delta, the biggest standard deviation, the more uncertainty in the system. Okay, and we'll do the same. We will show now effectivity and robustness of the error estimates if we change M and sigma, and we compare single level versus multi-level. So first effectivity. So this is the two um, plots, one with M equal to four, and then M equal to eight. As you can see, this does not, if we plot uh, effectivity indices that are obtained by computing the reference solution, uh, effectivity still stay very close to one. They, they don't blow up. So this somehow robustness in terms of increasing the number of active, the number of uh, uh, parameters in the system. And now we change the uncertainty in the system. We go from sigma 0 0.5 to sigma 0 1 half. Again, this still bring this expensive uh, error estimates they keep them uh, very close to one effectivity indices. The, the cheap ones will, will just, uh, will not blow up, but they will deviate as we progress uh, from one quite heavily. Uh, again, in the, in, the, in the hardest case, with sigma equal to one half and them equal to four, these are single level versus multi-level. Again, we don't gain anything from multi-level uh, here, even it becomes more costly and we have uh, even slightly more degrees of freedom. This is because um, the meshes associated with indices, when you can see interactions uh, between, the, uh, between different directions, meshes uh, have to be, the algorithm somehow decides to um, refine those meshes heavily. And this is what probably we need to understand better theoretically. So I can't stop here with the such pessimistic results. So they have experiment number three. And experiment number three is a problem with sexually deterministic on the left-hand side, but has the right-hand side uh, dependence on data. And we have a solution to this problem uh, exact form. This is, has a Gaussian profile with this uh, 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 exponent 50 over 16, and it's also anisotropic. Then we weight with the linear function, uh, the first component with respect to first uh, coordinates. So if you sample this uh, solution, so for some uh, locations of, uh, there are only two parameters, fixed number of parameters too. So it's looks simple problem, but it's quite difficult computationally actually. If you sample at this part of the, uh, of the parameter domain, you will have this Gaussian sort of a, uh, almost like a circle as a support. But uh, when you move to uh, this, this quadrant of the parameter domain, it becomes a little bit like ellipsoid because of this weighting. So it's slightly squashes. Okay. So for reference, this is how expectation and variance of the solution look like. And here's uh, we can actually compute something that we, uh, such that we, we know that we are not computing rubbish, such that we can have a reference quantity of interest, such that we, we know that we uh, 
computing the right thing. And this can be calculated actually analytically by pen and paper. Uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions uh, originally are not zero, but as you can see from samples, uh, in experiments, they are effectively zero. So our implementation with zero boundary condition works without, uh, actually, you, you don't commit much crime here. Right. Again, single level versus multi-level is what we are after. And here again, I, uh, finally, I have some positive news for you, right? So in black, single level converges at it's very hard problem. And you see, before I always had monotonicity of my error estimates. Here, there are some spikes here and there. Uh, uh, when some new degrees of freedom are introduced, uh, there are some spikes in the error estimates. But clearly, uh, multi-level versions, because of the structure of the problem, does do much better. If you look at the number of degrees of freedom, it's 15, 15 times bigger. It's uh, four times uh, a quicker computationally, and uh, oops, and we are doing quite well uh, in terms of the reference uh, error in the quantity of interest. Right. Again, this is single level mesh. This is the mesh that puts everything there, of course. And but the structure of the problem is such that this is the good choice of the method for this problem, and you can. Uh, the meshes associated with certain collocation points now are locally refinement. We take advantage of uh, what we have. So before concluding, probably I have one minute to philosophize. Uh, in the deterministic context, we kind of know the method that will likely to work for, for the problem at hand. And this is adaptive HP fam will likely to do the very good job. The point of this, uh, it's not so clear cut for parametric problems, as you can see in the talks today, if you have a fine expansion of the coefficient, it's, I think it's pretty much safe bet that adaptive multi-level stochastic Galerkin will give you optimal approximation properties. But if the problem is with non-affine expansion, with some tricky uh, parametric right-hand side, it's uh, some other methods may perform better. Right, so what we have achieved, we have new a posteriori error estimation, which is reliable, effective, and robust as demonstrated in experiments. It's applicable all sorts of parametric problems. Practical error indicators de derived from this error estimation strategy guide adaptivity, but should not be used for uh, error estimation. Adaptive algorithm, again, the same conclusion as Mikhail and Andreas work not seem to be feasible uh, in terms of optimality in general, but for problems with parameter dependent local spatial features, this is the right method to go for. Theory is open completely for this type of error estimators. It has been done for residual based. Uh, as you could see, there is a goal uh, in the last example. Probably we can design an algorithm with this goal in mind, and there are many other things to complete here. I thank you for listening.